Virginia, where we're joined by Ron Bonjean, who was an advisor on Donald Trump's transition team. Um, Ron, this is a, a, a campaign you know extremely well. You know the president. What do you think the mood is in the right White House right now? Because he's gone from saying, we won, shut this down, to we had a commanding lead and it just magically disappeared. Yeah, I will say that they're very focused. I mean, they still think that they have uh, a, a, a possibility of winning here. Obviously, the votes as they're dripping uh, through in the Rust Belt states of Wisconsin and Michigan, um, and you know they're going to be counting ballots in Pennsylvania. You know, some of these things are going Biden's way, um, but I would say it would be it, it, this is such an uh, such a close election. It's something that the polls never captured once again, just like they didn't in 2016. If I were the president in the White House, I would not be conceding this election. I would be challenging uh, or, or demanding a recount if these votes are really close. I mean, we're, we're coming into what looks like a photo finish. And you really want to have that, that camera looking to see which which horse in this horse race has just a little, a little bit ahead. Now, right now, it feels like it's going Biden's way. But you just you never know in this these type of circumstances. We thought the same thing in Florida in 2000 with Bush versus Gore, with you know, um, and both sides really dug in. It took the Supreme Court to decide, and that may very well happen again. However, we just don't know, and that's just adding to the uncertainty of Americans who are living in a pandemic right now due to COVID-19. This uncertainty is absolutely um, uh, mind crushing, if you will. So if you were advising the president right now and um, bearing in mind everything you're saying about the uncertainty, what should he be saying? Well, I think they should continue to say that every vote needs to be counted, um, that we want to make sure that there is uh, transparency in the counting process and that everything is done in a fair and above board manner. Uh, that's where we're getting to right now. That's what I would be doing if I were them. And the fact that the polls were wrong and that um, many of the pundits who claim that Biden was just going to win outright were wrong too. So they we're really in the nitty gritty here in terms of uh, the vote counting and, and to make sure every vote is counted and done so correctly. Ron, would you be telling him to stop going on Twitter as he has in the past hour uh, putting it on Twitter, things like, how come every time they count mail-in ballot dumps, they are devastating in their percentage and power of destruction? A tweet which has actually just been censored by Twitter, who says this is disputed and might be misleading about the election or uh, other civic processes. Would you tell him to be backing off those kind of uh, claims that are incorrect? Well, even if I told him to back off, I don't think he would probably listen to me. Um, He'll probably continue to to tweet whatever he feels like feels like tweeting. Look, I think that there is real concern among Republicans in some of these states that the votes may go uh, Biden's way. Sure, but if it does, it has to be done fairly. There's concerns in Pennsylvania. We know when the Pennsylvania Attorney General two or three days ago, it's the highest law enforcement official in the state, says that if this is going to be a Biden win. Those are concerning to those comments are concerning to Republicans. It makes it feel like somewhere behind the scenes there's going to be some weight thrown Biden's way. And I think that's what Trump is trying to do is ignite the flames for to make sure that this is done fairly. Ron, looking at the um, the turnout that President Trump has generated in this election and the fact that his base, despite the, the warnings from his own party and, and from critics, doesn't seem to have contracted, he looks like he could well have expanded this. What does that tell you about Trumpism as a, an ideological part of the Republican Party? Is President Trump going to ever go away? Well, I think that's absolutely really spot on that this group of people, I mean, you're talking about almost an even division of our country. That feeling, those feelings are not going to go away, but it's not about just about President Trump. It's about who can capture that electorate who really feels left out and they feel like they're, they, need, uh, they need help on the economy, they need help 
you know, they need people to hear what they have to say, that, that someone has to tap into that going into 2024 for sure. If I if, if Biden were to win, I would be trying to figure out ways to um, get people interested in, in me from that side of the field. Also, it shows you that they are not watching. These people are not watching major news networks or reading major media. They are looking at niche media. They are reading, they're looking at Facebook. They're, they're looking at the internet. They're looking at their local news and how they digest their information because most of the mainstream media was saying this was gonna be a Biden blowout and they just didn't buy it or believe it. Ron Bonjean, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And, and Lucy, I have to say that is a really important point that Ron has just made about where people are getting their information from. Because when I talk to Trump supporters, when I talk to Republicans in, in New Hampshire, where, where I actually live, uh, and across the country, the thing they say is, well, I'm not on Twitter. You know, I don't care about Twitter. I don't care what the news says. These are all media conspiracies. That's not what I'm hearing. And I think that is one of the reasons that so many Republicans, so many Trump supporters can just brush aside the, the, the statements that send Democrats through the roof.